Chapter 17 Special Operations Department Blackthorn Security Seeing the sign, Klein froze for a long time with an unexpected but reasonable feeling. It's really, don't know how to tease. Shaking his head and laughing, he climbed the stairs, reached out his right hand and tapped on the half-open door. Boom! 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 Theslo and Rhythmic Knock reverberated, but the house did not respond at all, only the rattling of the movement faintly out. Boom! 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 Klein repeated it again, and the result was the same. He knocked instead of pushing, making the gap wider. His eyes then looked in and saw a group of classical sofas, soft chairs and raw wood coffee tables, and saw a table directly opposite, and behind the table, head bowed, brown hair girl bit by bit. Although the security company brand is just a disguise, it is too, too unprofessional, isn't it? How long has it been since business came through? Well, you don't need any business. Klein gets close and knocks twice on the table, next to the girl's ear. Boom! Boom! That brown-haired girl sat up straight, her hands jerked up the open newspaper in front of her, covering her face. The plain dealer of Tingen. Good name? Klein looked up at her side of the newspaper. The steam train fly to the city of Constanston opens today. Really? When can we go straight to Dicey Bay? I don't want to go by boat again. It's too bad. Too bad. Why? Who are you? The brown-haired girl pretends to read and comment, and as she does so, she lowers her newspaper, reveals her smooth forehead and light brown eyes, and looks at Klein, first ingratiating and then stunned. Hello, I'm Klein Moretti at the invitation of Mr. Dunn Smith. Klein took off her top hat, placed it on her chest, and bowed slightly. Brown-haired girl in her early 20s, wearing a light green when style light skirt. Cuffs, neckline, chest, and other places have beautiful lace, set off her face more beautiful. Captain, all right, you wait here and I'll ask him. The girl got up hurriedly and went into the inner room through the side door. Not a glass of water or anything. The sense of service is worrying. Klein smiled and stayed where she was, not going to the couch or chair. After two or three minutes, the girl with brown hair opened the door and came out with a sweet smile. Mr. Moretti, please follow me. The captain is on duty at Gate Chanis today and cannot leave. All right, Klein walked gently, but she was wondering. Chanis Gate, what is that? Throth partition. The first thing that hit his eyes was a short corridor with only three offices on each side. Some of these offices were locked, others were open, and people inside could be seen tapping away at heavy mechanical typewriters. After a quick glance, Klein spotted someone she knew, the young police officer, who had come to search her house that day, the dark-haired, blue-eyed, poet romantic. He was not wearing a formal suit, his white shirt was not tied into his trousers, and he looked unrestrained. Maybe he really is a poet. Klein nodded and he smiled back. The brown-haired girl twisted the handle of the office at the left end, pushed the door open, pointed inside, and smiled. There are still a few flights of stairs to go down. The office was bare of objects, only gray stone stairs leading down. The walls on both sides of the stairs are lit with elegantly shaped gas lamps. The steady light dispels the darkness and brings peace. The brown-haired girl walked ahead, looking carefully at her feet. Evendao, I walk here a lot. I'm still afraid, always worried about falling, rumbling down. You don't know, Leonard did this stupid thing. The first day, he became a sleepless. The first day, he didn't fully grasp his own power. He tried to run down at a sprint speed. And then, then he became a wheel. Ha <laughs> ha, it's funny to think. Um, that's the fellow you were just greeting, and that was three years ago. Well, it's been five years since I joined the Watchmen, and I was only 17 then. While looking at the road, the girl spoke in a familiar way. 
Suddenly, she secretly patted her forehead and said, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Roseanne. My father is a regular member of the Night Watch. Five years ago died in an accident. In the future, we should be colleagues. Uh, should use the word colleagues. We're not teammates. We're not extraordinary. I hope to have the honor, but ultimately it's up to Mr. Smith to say. As Klein looked around the enclosure, she felt the two men begin to enter the ground. The stone walls permeate with cold moisture, dissipating the summer heat. Rest assured, to have you come here directly means that the captain has agreed. I have always been a little afraid of the captain. Although he is very kind and caring, giving me the feeling of a father, but for some reason, just afraid. Roseanne speaks like she has a candy bar in her voice. Klein responded humorously, isn't it normal to be afraid of your father? That makes sense. At the corner, Roseanne reached down to help the wall. As they spoke, they walked down the winding stairs to a flat stone. It's a long hallway, and the walls on both sides are also inlaid with metal grates enclosing gas lamps, which shine down and drag out the shadows of Klein and Roseanne. Klein was keenly aware of the sacred emblem of darkness on the wall at regular intervals. A symbol of the goddess of night, deep black, glittering, surrounded by exactly half the crimson moon. The emblem seemed nothing special, but as Klein walked among them, she calmed down, and Roseanne closed her mouth and stopped chatting as before. Before long, a crossroads appeared ahead, and the girl with brown hair briefly introduced. On left, leads to the church of St. Selena, on the right to the arms, materials and documents store, and straight ahead to the gate of chains. St. Selena's church is Zotland Street just behind Red Moon Street. Klein was stunned. The church of St. Selena of Red Moon Street is the headquarters of the Church of the Goddess of the Night in Tingen City, a sacred place for local devout believers, and the Church of the God of Steam and Machinery in the suburbs. The Church of the Number of Saints, also located in the Northern District of Tingen, the Church of the Storm Bishop, the river and the sea together to support the religious community of Tingen City and its affiliated towns and villages. Conscious that she was not in a position to ask questions, Klein just listened without making a sound. Through the intersection, straight forward, less than a minute, a black iron door engraved with seven sacred badges appeared in front of the two people. It stands there, visually heavy, cold, and looking down, like a giant guarding the dark. Chaniscate, Roseanne said, pointing to the next room. The captain's in there. Go in yourself. Yes, please, Klein politely replied. The room Roseanne was pointing to was just in front of the chain's gate. The window was open and the light shone. Klein took a breath and bowed her fingers. Boom. 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 Come on. Done. Smith's deep. Warm voice came out. Klein gently pushed open the open door and saw only a table and four chairs inside with Dunn's high hairline. Smith, wearing the same black trench coat he wore last night, read the newspaper leisurely and had a gold watch chain near the button on his chest. Sit down. Think it over. Sure you want to join us? Dunn asked with a smile, putting down his newspaper. Klein took off her hat saluted, sat down at the table, and nodded slowly. Yes, I'm sure. Then you look at this contract. Ha ha, now people like to call it a contract. Dunn pulled open his desk drawer and pulled out the contract in duplicate. There were not many of them, mostly those that Dunn Smith had mentioned before. And the emphasis was on the secrecy clause, in which violators would no longer go through the courts of the kingdom but would be tried directly by the tribunal of the Church of the Night Goddess, just as soldiers and officers were court-martialed. Five-year contract, two pounds, ten sous per week, ten sous for confidentiality and risk allowance. Klein read them all and replied, not problem with me. Then sign it. Dunn pointed to the dark red pen and ink channel on the table. 
Klein tried the pen on scrap paper, then took a covert breath and signed both contracts in their respective places. Klein. Moretti. He didn't have a stamp yet, so he had to apply his fingerprints. Dunn withdrew the deed, took a seal from the drawer, and stamped it at the end and at several points. Having done all this, he stood up, handed back the contract with one hand, and reached out to Klein with the other. Welcome. From now on, you are one of us. Mind you, the contract is confidential. Klein stood up and accepted the contract, holding his hand and smiling. Then shall I call you captain? Yes. Dunn's gray eyes were deep in the dim surroundings. After shaking hands, the two men sat down separately, and Klein looked at the seal on the contract, and saw that it read Night Watch Squad of the City of Tingen, Alva County, Kingdom of Rune. I never thought you'd cover it up with Blackbriar's security. He laughed casually. Actually, we have another sign. Dunn took a piece of paper out of the drawer. It bore the double seal of the city and the police department and contained two lines offwards. UNIT-7, Special Operations Department, Ahoa County Police Department, Kingdom of Rouen. The first for groups are the normal police who assume security, such as the protection group of important officers, the protection group of important places, etc. And from the fifth group, it is for the supernatural events in various cities in the county. Our seventh group is responsible for the goddess believers related events in Tingan City. If there are different believers, according to the geographical division, we are mainly north, west, and golden Indus district and other places. Dunn outlined, the sixth team of the Storm Bishop's victors will be in charge of the Docklands, east and south while the fifth team in the university and the suburbs will be the Mechanical Hearts team in Tingen. HMM. Klein, unable to find anything to ask, laughs. What if someone actually came to the house and commissioned a job under the Blackbriar security brand? Answer it. Why not? As long as it doesn't interfere with day-to-day -day business. Dunn replied, speaking slowly and with good humor, the team is happy to make money as a bonus. Since the hassle and trivia of finding dogs and cats is now being handled by private investigators. How many men are there in our squad of watchmen? Klein asked on this topic. There are not many supernatural events, even fewer extraordinary ones. And there are only six official members of the Night Watch in the whole city of Tingen, including me, oh, there are six civil servants counting you. Dunn answered in no hurry. Klein nodded and finally asked what she cared about most. Captain, what do you mean about the extraordinary out of control? Why did it get out of control?